Greetings, nerds. This is Sane and Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. I uh, want to wish you a happy birthday here on the podcast. I know, I, did, I know it was yesterday, but uh, happy birthday. But yeah, thank you for the birthday wishes. Will <laughs> wants to spoil everyone and explain exactly how season four of The Boys will de- debut. Um, and it's going to drop with three episodes on June 13th. So go ahead with your spoilers. Well, it's really not a spoiler. This is from the official Amazon release that dropped the uh, announcement today that, yes, it is coming back uh, June 13th with three episodes, and it's going to be an eight-episode season. So we'll see the season finale on July 18th. And uh, basically, this, the official description from from the show is that uh, in season, quote, in season four, the world is on the brink. Victoria News- Newman is... Closer than ever to the Oval Office, under the muscly thumb of Homelander, who has consolidated his power, Butch with Butcher with only months to live, has lost Becca's son and his job as the boys' leader. The rest of the team are fed up with his lies. With the stakes higher than ever, they have to find a way to work together and save the world before it's too late, end quote. So basically, it's just reminding everyone where everything ended at the third season. And if you did watch Gen V, it also know a little bit of things about victoria and her political run um so they are touching on some of the things from that show just to get everybody up to speed isn't uh don't they normally drop eight episodes yeah yeah i think that's sort of been the amazon run okay. count lately but yeah but I, the, the thing is i think you know i think the first season they dropped them all at once but i think from the second season on they've done this drop three and then uh, and then the the remaining episodes come out I weekly. The last that. two seasons, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, for sure they've done that. Yeah, but but yeah, I was thinking, I was like, it's nothing new that it's eight episodes long. I'm just checking on IMDb. No, yeah, no, was, yeah, yeah they've just, always been in eight episode long seasons. Yeah. So, um, but we will be talking about that. Yeah, I was just thinking yeah. summer's going to be June's going to be packed. <laughs> well, it got... always happens. It yeah. like when there are quote unquote um, shortage of content, then the water hose just turns on and all this content comes, and then. But you know, all of the important stuff we'll get around to when we do. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and then Will loves talking about Star Wars the Acolyte. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's what I meant by <laughs> June being packed because uh, it's also, co- according to Collider, even though Disney and Lucasfilms has not officially released a date yet, but it's also supposedly coming on June the 5th, the latest entry from the Star Wars universe. So, but we, you know, I guess at this point we'll just sort of wait for Disney to, officially confirm it and probably get a trailer here pretty soon i would think i just love how you confirmed my point by saying like this isn't official meaning when it is official i get to talk about the accolade again yeah just no sarah yeah okay (laughs) (laughs) well you know there's some folks out there who like star wars i know you you know i know you're worried about it being a bunch of sand which you know i'm still speaking of which i'm still trying to like decide if i'm gonna go see dune 2 or not (laughs) Because you haven't even finished the first one. I finally I finished the first one in bits and pieces, oh. but I, I mean, but yeah, but you know, but that's because most of the time I fall asleep when I'm watching. Right, it, so. right. It is a Dune <laughs> one. I'm sorry, Dune one snooze fest, complete waste of time, complete waste of time, so boring. And then in the last, like, and Zendaya is like in five minutes of the movie if you put everything together. Mm-hmm. And there's just a lot of talk, talk, walk, walk, sand, sand, sand monster. Yeah. So it's just so freaking boring. But I also, it's truly a part one of two. So I can't hold too much against it just because, right. like, you know, probably watching them back to back, it's like, oh my God, that was so cool. But having to wait years in between but then again it's not like i've been waiting for dune too so i don't know i'll probably not see it in theater (laughs) like i just always wonder. yeah i just always wondered if like maybe if i had seen it in the theater the first time maybe my experience might have been different but but then again i'm like dune's has never been one of those like 
IPs where I've read the book, watched the first, you know, watched other iterations of it, but it's never been like one of those things that like I'm really drawn towards. So we'll see. Yeah. 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 I I feel like we talked about this before, but I guess it did just get, get confirmed this week about why Superman and Lois was canceled. And it's because we're going to have Superman Legacy. Yep. So yeah. you can't have two Superman things at the same time. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just the CW president just said the quiet part out loud, which is just that, that, uh, at the uh, TCA's uh, telev- the Television Critics Association meeting last week, uh, in addition to, you know, we talked about, we did talk about it last week, and I just wanted to, to sort of close that loop. And also, you know, speaking of Superman Legacy, uh, James Gunn dropped a photo of the cast together after their first um, table read, I think it was today or yesterday on Threads. So, you know, so there, that is out there, first time we've seen them all together. Um, and, and also dropped the... Um, logo that will be utilized for the superman legacy which to the superman kingdom come emblem that he that he wore so which you know james has just been teasing us all along with that so i think it'll be like an inverse kingdom come thing or maybe building towards kingdom come which we saw that in the crisis on infinite earths version um of that character uh during in the era verse so we'll see I kind of fell asleep while you were explaining all that. <laughs> I just realized, like, I'm, like, hearing these words of references of comic book runs that Will has mentioned in the past, but my brain is just not putting pieces together. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do what my dad always tells me. That's wonderful. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So, so... I don't know, but I'm assuming because you put this on the rundown, um, you watched at least one episode of A Killer Paradox. I've watched two and I had to stop myself so I would like actually be coherent this week. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm really digging the show. Okay. I, I it's am. hard for me, and we've had discussions about this, and this is what I'm worried about. I'm ahead. I haven't finished it. Um, I have my reasons. Um, I don't want to spoil anything for you, so it's hard for me to have a conversation, but so this is just Will talking, like, mainly what our news and TV, um, section usually is, so listeners are used to this. Um, so Will, give us your thoughts on episodes one and two of The Killer Paradox. Uh, like, I, I mean, I, like you said, I mean, I think, um, it's... It's hard. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't watched it yet, but if you are, if you really like mysteries, thrillers, um, police, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's a, not a paint by the numbers police procedural, but it also has a lot of forensic things that come into play and, it, you know, and um, the, the lead character, first person, narratives and 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 as far as how he is perceiving things and and when things happen um you know you see it from his perspective and and it's just i'm just really just digging the cinematography the storytelling it's just keeps me on the edge of my seat because it's like what's going to happen next and i you know the um i'm just really enjoying it I'm just really, really enjoying it. So it's definitely something that I'll probably finish over the weekend because I've really, I've really gotten into the show. Cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. So a killer paradox people can watch on Netflix. So this brings us to um, our discussion about Reacher season two, episode eight, Flyboy, which is the season finale. Um, and the IMDb summary is Reacher and Nagley make a final departure desperate attempt to save O'Donnell and Dixon and stop AM and avenge their friend's murder. What, how in the summary do they bring up AM when that man appears in all eight episodes, all about 15 minutes? Yeah. Like, and Oh, see the biggest sin of this finale for me, the biggest sin, the biggest crime is we finally get AM and Reacher face to face, and AM 
becomes like just a stupid idiot villain who just claims I'm just the middleman mm-hmm. and I don't actually like to use the weapons. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, because I'm claiming this, like I'm not the bad guy here. So you, you shouldn't kill me. Mm-hmm. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Who wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I sent you a message earlier in the week when I watched the show, and I was like, yeah, it happened. <laughs> I was so disappointed by this. I, I was. I mean, yeah. It it happened. Yeah. And I thought I was expecting, like, anything grand, but, I, but at the same time, I was like, did they even try? Oh, they definitely tied up all of their loose oh, yeah. ends, pun yeah. intended. The, the line that was said, I don't know, just about as many times as, like, assumptions kill. Yeah. Um, but, I, and I kept thinking about it. I'm like, it, it fascinates me how there can be action sequences in a show like this, a show like Echo, mm-hmm. and a show... Like, we'll just stick to Echo and Reacher because we've watched both of them recently. And they're kind of in different genres. But because of their genres, there are a lot of fight sequences. Mm -hmm. And we had issues with the storytelling that occurred in Echo in terms of character growth and um, development. However, the fight choreography that occurred in Echo, for the most part, was really good as long yeah. as you could see what was going on. I'm talking yeah. about that fucking train sequence. Mm-hmm. Then compared to Reacher, where I'm pretty sure I, there was no issues with lighting during these fight sequences. There yeah. was an issue about just boredom. Like it's so standard. If mm-hmm. you're going to have a sh- produce a show where m- there's a lot of emphasis on gunplay, on um, like a hide and seek, trying to build the tension, trying to um, play cat and mouse with these characters and then have some hand to hand combat every now and then. Like, dear Lord, these sequences we have seen played out for decades. This is nothing original. And so it's just so boring. And then you have the sequence with the freaking helicopter. Oh, yeah. my God. This the helicopter sequences. Oh, it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. I mean, it also just like the flaw, you know, to the to your point about the fight scenes, they, you know, we, we even kind of joked. The only thing that didn't happen was him getting beat by a, with the pipe. But otherwise, you know, they did put him in the chair and, you know, and then but then like it just the the the, the fault in, in logic here. It was just like it was like the mustache twirling villain. But it, and, and, and granted, it's been that way the whole season. So it's not like, you know, I wasn't expecting magically that logic and anything would like happen here in the finale but you know him like this yap you know langston just sitting you know just going on and on and on and, and reach you surrounded by all these guns i mean really it was just like just just kill the guy already <laughs> i mean what, why do you need to like sit there and like have some long rant i mean i, I don't know I, I was yeah i mean it was just yeah i i like i said i i just like okay it's done <laughs> yeah yeah and swan turned out to be dead yeah yeah which we I mean, did that, not see him die no nope. we did see his eyeball though we saw his eyeball and his finger but but still that was a whole letdown because for for episodes there was all this mystery about it and they yeah. Like, it was resolved in five minutes and very anticlimactic and not that shocking. The payoff yeah. just did not hit at all. No. It just, they definitely did not, and I can't, I'm just going to continue saying, there's, they, they did tie up every loose end they mm-hmm. started with. Even the senator. Um, mm-hmm. um And his backup, who then they tried to, Make it another plot to us. Oh, those guys aren't really even on their side. And then the, but Reacher already figured that out. So he brought in Homeland. Like, it's like, okay, I kind of see why you needed to, because so far it's been so 
paint by number, but at the same time, it, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I guess they're, you know, with, with the Swan thing, yeah, they did, I mean, I guess they're like, okay, we paid off Reacher's faith in his team. And, and I guess they tried to do some character growth and development with Reacher at the end. You know, but you know, he can say they, the characters stay consistent with himself in that even when Neagley was when they were there at the bus station and at all after he, you know, after he played Santa Claus with the 65 million, um, he, he you know, they he, he you know, he, he stayed as Reacher until they got on the bus and then you know, he had to, you know, else here visiting family in town. So, so I yeah. guess they were trying to show that, yeah. But because he just because he says that that to me that doesn't represent character growth. Yeah. At all. Like he still well, gets on the bus. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I, I just, guess he just you, I guess he just have, verbalized it. Yeah. I guess which is he, I guess he verbalizes it, but he's verbalized a lot of stuff, and it's just I don't know. To me, I feel as though you're bringing up something. That probably is more of a root of my issue with this season of where Reacher is the same exact person who we meet in episode one of this season and who leaves in episode eight. Like yeah. there he he doesn't change. He's just honestly proven right in everything. Like yeah. there isn't even a, a like that one moment where Dixon was like, oh, I want you to meet my family. It turned out to be a complete joke. It's like, see, this is why I couldn't invest in you two because I figured this wasn't gonna go anywhere, mm -hmm. and and it just. But I was like, then what was the point of it? What right. was the point of that? Like, oh, we're finishing unresolved business. Yeah. Well, as a viewer who barely understands what that unresolved um, business was. Like you had so much, so much time to do these fucking flashbacks that you just wasted on teasing out other things. And it's just, there was, there was a lot of missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, Reacher is the same person, like, like to have a main character go through no growth. And honestly, it doesn't just mean Reacher. None of these characters go through any change as a result of this yeah. the one person who probably would have had the most change would have been gus and gus got killed yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it, it yeah i mean it was it was just a lot it was a, it was a cartoon <laughs> it was and cartoons have like more depth sometimes than in this show i mean it, it had so much potential but it just uh, like I said at the end, uh, that they that the writers' room just quit. They're like they tied everything up. I mean, they didn't. I mean, I guess if they if they wanted to leave one kind of loose end, it was like who were the buyers for all the you know for the um, for the weapon system. But but even at that, I mean, that's you know that's really at the end of the day, all the big plot points were like neatly wrapped up in a bow, and Homeland security is going to go off and get you know they probably know who the buyers are so we really don't really that you know, really wouldn't have added anything to find out who it was but but you're right everything pretty much was wrapped up yeah. yeah yep all right well that is we are putting a bow on that discussion they did get greenlit for season three right that is correct and and reacher's apparently going undercover um, I, you know, I have a, I know they're filming season three right now, but I really haven't, or maybe they just finished filming it, but I really haven't like dug, dug much into it. Um, I, I know, I, yeah, I can't remember. I know that I think they're adapting to maybe the fifth book or something. I can't remember, but, um, I don't know. For some reason, I feel yeah. like somebody told me that, or I saw something about that at one point in time, yeah. who knows, um, if, and when we will watch season three of the Reacher, um, we are moving on to Mr. and Mrs. Smith, season one, episode three, first vacation. Will, what did you think about this episode? I, I each episode, I, I, I fall more and more fond of this series, uh, because I, mean, I, I just love the way that each adventure that the Smiths go on, 
the the mission is like a metaphor for the, the, the growth in the relationship. And this one was titled, you know, first vacation. And so, you know, the subjects of the of the mission this time were, you know, reflecting um, some of the things, the growing pains, growing pains that couples go through. Um, of course, the, the, the subjects of their mission this time were a long married couple who whose marriage is hanging on by a thread. But the the parallels that they had, you know, even you know, we got this new couple getting started, but the, and this old couple with the whole sleeping arrangements was 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 was, uh, was a really really well well done. So, what were your thoughts of the uh, of the episode? Um, it was it was fine. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't. This is it's staying consistent. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the IMD summary of this episode is John and Jane take a tr- vacation in um, in the Italian Dolmen Nights and will new hobbies and friendships lead to romance? Well, they already fucked, so. So, yeah. And um, there wasn't any consequence with John having saved Gaval. No, I was wondering about that because I know they already had one fail, but... She, you know, he does freelance well, there I after. I don't know. Oh, sorry. No, no. I was wondering. Through, I, I was wondering, like, at the end of the episode, because I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I mean, I wasn't. I, I know they, they they did. I think they got what they they were supposed to do, which was to bug their phones. Uh, but then when he freelanced it afterwards, uh, with you know, whenever she got kidnapped, uh, I, you know, I, I was wondering what if that like complicated things that the, what the company wanted or 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 did that she or just by the fact that they bugged the phones and got that part done all the rest of it is just sort of they, the company is just going to take a blind eye to right yeah i i don't know and they didn't really give us anything to go off of there um yeah. it's more of an open it it's more of something that i feel as though they want you to forget about and just feel like it was a successful mission, but it'll be brought up in like the last episode. Yeah. Somehow. Um, but so, so overall they, they go on vacation um, and they learn to sleep in the same bed together. And Jane learns how to fart in front of John. And <laughs> essentially what happens and and yeah and then they they return for episode four double date which john and jane smith plan a double date with another couple the other john and jane smith who they randomly bump into and these new friends prove to be wildly unpredictable leading to escalating antics over the course of the remaining evening what what did you think about the other john and jane um, so whenever they, whenever our John, I guess I'll say John one, uh, Donald Glover's John figured out that the guy was a part of the company. And I, and I like the way that they, you know, with the, with the, the black card, you know, sort of like the, the black card in America, super, you know, super only select people in the world get that card or whatever. I thought that was pretty cool. I guess the thing that I was, all, but also I was like. Yeah, I know you found out by accident and you recognized the thing, but I just I was taken aback about how how ca- how casual they were about talking to these people, inviting them over to their apartment and stuff. I was always thinking like, all right, now you know, especially like when you, you know, it was one of those things where I was just like, well, um, you know, are they are they going to be potential double agents or could these folks be like, you know, I did think back back to the very first episode where, you know, if if they fell too many times, will these John and Jane Smith be the ones that will come and take them out? So, you know, especially now that they know where everything is at, even showing their like safe room and everything else. It's like, all right, guys, y'all are awful trusting for these people you just met. <laughs> yeah. So the first episode, meaning you think that 
the first John and Jane, who we meet at the very beginning, they failed, and that's why they ended up getting killed? Or they were, you know, I think they were planning on getting out, if I recall. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, and I think to that discussion while during a double date about our John and Jane t- telling the other John and Jane about, you know, what their long term plans were and, and, and all, uh, you know, as far as making right. enough money and then getting out and stuff. I was, you know, I, I was like trying to, I was thinking through like, you know, I think that's what that first couple did at the very beginning, at the very first couple right, minutes right. of the first episode. Yeah. So, yeah. When you, know, you the, said failed, I was like, that wasn't my interpretation of it. My no. interpretation is they were, they've been on the run from the company and they were, they yeah. were going to stop running and actually try to face them. And I also think that this couple is the one who killed them at the very beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought that, too. I thought that, too. And that's what I meant by the fell. Like, when I say fell, not that because the fell of it was more like, you know, since they fell in the second episode, if they yeah, I think if they get two more, then I think, you know, bad things happen to them. So no, I was just wondering. No, I, I, why do you say think two more? I thought that if I recall in episode two, hi hi, basic. If I and I make I might I, I thought that they basically had three a three strike rule, and if they okay. they screwed up, then then okay. then they you know they would be terminated, literally. Yeah, yeah. The only way out is going to be death. Yeah. Then, which is ironic, death to your part. Yep. So it's um yeah that 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 makes sense and and I, I yeah I think in this episode because of the other John and Jane you you are the John and Jane that we've been following they um they have this they live in this bubble of <laughs> naiveness <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about their job about their choices about what this company is about that they want and it's it, it's just it's interesting how as a viewer like why like i still question like what was with the freaking fingernail like you give them a fingernail why why, why, why finger now? Um, and you think that this is gonna be like a a company that you can just make a lot of money off out um at and then leave. But then they talked about how the delivery men are like very low class mm-hmm. employees. So so there's some ways to to get out of the um the covert missions per se and quote unquote semi retire. I I suppose we don't know how much of that stuff is true, but, but yeah, yeah it, it did come out like John and Jane still have no idea really what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, cause, cause and, and, and I'm glad you brought up the, 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 the tiers of employment with the company. Cause you, you know, you do have like, you know, we did see the delivery guys at the first episode, and then you know our new John and Jane that we are introduced to in this episode. You know, they're super high risk. You know, which is like I guess the highest level of of, of classification, at least at least that we know of to date in the company, and 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 the super you know, the, and the risk that they have to take with these with these missions, especially whenever you know in the in the adrenaline drunken rush of of the night they were like oh let's 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 take it you guys can come on with us you know we'll double date not only at dinner but we'll double date on a mission which was which was pretty funny uh, how that all how that all played out what i was think, so yeah. worried that jane was going to um be drunk enough to randomly just put out there that john is in touch with his mom i thought that too I mean, that was yeah. one of the things from the third episode. I know we did. I know we kind of zipped through the third episode, but I did. You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up about the mom because um, the um, you know it, the with the group, you know, as they really, as I said at the beginning of our discussion here, I mean, they really are going through the growing pains of relationships and the trust factor um, that 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 comes into play uh, over time and and how. 
Jane really felt in the third episode where John, you know, it was holding on to his old his old life and 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 keeping that keeping those secrets and and you know and that's you know, with, with relationships all the time. I mean, if you you know the whole things back from your partner, it can definitely you know, it definitely be to your detriment. Even though Jane had a pretty extreme example of like why she allegedly you know doesn't want to like talk to her father. But I thought that was a bit much. But again, it just sort of shows how she can 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 yank John's chain as far as like how how you know takes advantage of his curiosity sometimes um and use it to her benefit but um to just to, to just sort of see to just sort of tease him out and, and, and figure out what's going on in his head. But um but yeah that's you know that, that that trust factor definitely was something that was really at play in that third episode and you know with all the stuff with the um you know with the phones and um him being childish and like turn it locator off i mean it was you know, and, and then when we get to this fourth episode like you said i thought she was going to blab something that could even compromise them even more because after john like you know really, really trusted to some random people off the street yeah yeah um it was it yeah it it was John who I don't know if this double date would have ever happened had the two Janes run into each other. No. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with, with our Jane. Mm-hmm. Um, I that wouldn't have happened. To John, it makes complete sense based on all of his actions leading up to this. Yeah. Um and everything. And yeah, it's <sighs> They're, in my opinion, they're doing a really good job with Jane just because of all of the random stories or just random little notions about um, traumatic events to children that you, because because of, the, I'm thinking about, I want to say even in the very first episode, Mm-hmm. She tells a story about eating um, breakfast with a pedophile. Yeah. So, and 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 I think um, it's fascinating because in the, her interview with Hi Hi at the beginning, she also talks about her secrets and the fact that people have called her a pathological liar and all of this stuff. Where you're seeing that, so. John is a curious person. He likes to figure people out. She is a really hard person to figure out. Um, And I think that's why there's an attraction there, even though they get frustrated about those attributes in each other. Mm -hmm. um, That's why they have good chemistry as characters, as well as actors. Um, So, so they're doing that. I just, I guess going into this week, I know you're really high on everything. Um, and it's not, I'm, this show is, is again, well written, well acted. I don't know what it is though, but I'm not, it's not like I'm disappointed by anything, but I'm also not surprised by anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything oh. either. And yeah. I'm just, I um I I feel like you said this early on while we were talking about Reacher season two, and I'm gonna say it right now. I think I would have I could have I know I could have binged this in one day, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I I have a feeling I would have as a, an entire eight ten episode piece. I would have um, been been more overwhelmed and enthused about it than having broken it up. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it's definitely a bingeable type series. I think for me, it's it's really the the exploration of relationships. And I, you know, and it, and it makes it else funny whenever we were. I was just thinking another day uh, why Amazon dropped this. During February, I was like, you know, Valentine's month, and you know, and and all. I just think 
the the action and the stories and all that kind of stuff i mean that to me is not like the what is drawing me to this this show absolutely it's, it's really more the exploration of like this couple and right. the thing you know and they use these these use these missions to basically like really get into the exploration of people's you know of, of relationships and how couples grow and change and learn each other and that kind of stuff so uh you know so it's not like i won't say it's necessarily a rom-com but <laughs> that's like a rom of rom action <laughs> um but uh, i mean i think that's for me that's where i in a, a, as i said at the beginning of this of of our, our discussion tonight i mean that's where where i'm enjoying this episode because you know it's just you know seeing things as far as like prior relationships i've been in current relationship whatever i'm like oh yeah i remember that situation oh yeah this is seeing these up ups and downs bumps in the roads and stuff and and i think it's just something that uh you know it's enjoyable from from that standpoint that's where i, I i'm enjoying the series yeah yeah that... I mean, cause was, yeah there's just like you know just relatable things that happen along the way where you're just like oh yeah <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, uh, remember that? Or oh yeah, we we we've been. I know of friends who've been through this or that kind of thing. You know that or or had discussions about that. You know this with friends or whatever. So yeah, yeah, it's um it it. I already said it's well written and yeah. it's doing what it should be doing. Um, there's just something about it that um I'm not overly enthusiastic about. Still haven't figured out what that will or what that is, but I think I will eventually, hopefully by the end of the season. All right. And but before we say our goodbyes, um, Will, do you want to explain this contest? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we are just, um, you know, of course, we always appreciate our, our listeners and look at ways to, uh, you know, with social media algorithms and stuff being funky and sweet. And whatnot. Um, we are building up an email list. So if you haven't gone to our website, you'll probably see a little pop up. Sign up. We don't. We're not going to spam or sell your information or anything. But um, yeah, we just wanted to be able to deliver our episodes right into your inbox whenever they are they are released. So uh, if we if you I've already subscribed to our feeds wherever you get the podcasts. Thank you. Uh, but also if you are you know just rely on social media to get our episodes and just hope they show up in your timeline um you know there's a more reliable way of doing so and by signing up for our our email list so you can get it delivered right to it so you don't know have to worry about um looking for it on twitter or wherever you get your pocket as far whatever social media platform you may try to you may find us from so yeah so with that uh dropped had several had quite a few people sign up which thank you for for signing up and uh we did have a winner and it was a uh, GG from actually uh, We Geek Girls, uh, which is another um, great geek platform. If you if you haven't followed them, uh, definitely go check them out. And uh, congratulations! And uh, we'll follow up with you at the email to get your prize to you. So that is, and and again, if you um, we appreciate your signing up. And like I said, we won't spam. We don't. And uh, make sure you subscribe to us on whatever platform you listen to us at. Congrats, Gigi. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Will. Um, on that note, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter, also known, or X, or whatever the hell they're calling it these days, at Will and Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. You can find me on X. Formerly known as Twitter, as seen in, at SJ Belmont, SJ B L M O N T. Please follow our crew there as well at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. Hey.